Welcome back everyone to the Zoom Social Chat and my name is Tafadzwa and our special guest today on our final episode for the season is Ruveneko. Thank you for joining us Ruveneko. Thanks for having me. So please can you tell us a bit more about yourself? I don't know how to answer that <laughs> question um, but I think to summarize who I am mm -hmm. is I'm a media personality mm -hmm. um, and that basically means that I am a bit of everything across the media spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I do radio, I do television, mm -hmm. and print was actually where I started, believe it or not. Um, but I haven't had enough uh, time to get into that. But it's definitely an area I want to get into more. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm basically just a young Zimbabwean woman who has a definite, um, you know, need and desire to contribute to my country positively mm -hmm. in my sphere of influence, which is the media space. Mm -hmm. So um, that's me, and I... I, I make no apologies for any of who I am or where I was born of or anything like that. It's just, um, that's just me. And I'm trying my best to make a name for myself um, with the work that I put in. No, oh, you sound yeah. very driven. <laughs> <laughs> and then as well as what got you into media? What made you fall in love with the industry itself? Um, I first got into media in university. Mm -hmm. I um, used to listen to 5FM mornings every morning when I was in Cape Town and Gareth Cliff used to be on air. Mm -hmm. So I used to listen to him and I thought to myself, this is really cool. You know, he was just very, a very attractive radio personality. So he made me first fall in love with radio. Um, but I'd always uh, grown up watching TV and watching people like Oprah and thinking yeah. I could do that, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, initially I'd gone to university to study law, but I changed my mind when I like I said, got drawn to radio. Then I joined uh, our campus radio station, which was UCT Radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, there was just no turning back. Yeah. It just had to be. You fell in love with it. Completely. <laughs> completely. Yeah. And then another thing is you're very active on social media. Mm -hmm. And since we're a very digitally driven agency, yeah. like as an influencer online, like how have you used that to your advantage? I feel like most days is a disadvantage <laughs> given some of the attacks that I get on social media. Um, what I used to use social media for a lot before was my uh, program, my talk show. Mm -hmm. What I believe is when you're having any kind of discussion about Zimbabwean issues, you need to hear from Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. And um, just depending on the live call-ins or the live messages that came in, it's not sufficient. Yeah. So I used social media as a tool to connect with audiences. Mm -hmm. There is no um, borders or boundaries when you talk of social media. Mm -hmm. So if I put up a post on Facebook or on Twitter about what I'm discussing that evening, mm -hmm. I got responses from people everywhere. Those that have left Zimbabwe bitter and are in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Those that are successful in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Those that live locally, those that live regionally. So it was definitely a, a, a platform for me to hear from people all over and people are uncensored on social media which is what I loved about it you know what I love about it um, so I, I used it for my advantage for that because it made my programs more more rich and more holistic because I got you know such a, a plethora of different um, you know opinions from from people and it's also good afterwards you know because you get like I'm saying the you know, you'll have a very good show sometimes. Sometimes it'll be a terrible show. Even you know it. Yeah. And the feedback that you get, although you cannot take everything to heart too much because we're not paying. Yeah, you know, you, it's, it's a good place to get feedback to know where you're at. You know, yeah. where, what area you need to improve mm -hmm. because your biggest critics are on social media because yes. everyone has that voice and everyone, because they're faceless, they think they can say whatever they like. Mm -hmm. So some are genuinely hurtful and hateful, but some are very constructive in their criticism. And I used to use that to grow myself and say, okay, in this show I was a bit too much of that yeah. or you know and then I find a way to make myself better um, and now um, since I've been off air it's just a way to also stay connected with what's happening and whatever I decide to put my efforts toward it must be something that's socially and contextually relevant to what Zimbabweans want to hear about what Zimbabweans are talking about and also as well it's a global village mm -hmm. so it's about connecting with everyone everywhere and that's very yeah. true. Like you have to have thick skin to be active on social media. Thick skin has got to be <laughs> understatement of the year. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think people don't understand that when they speak to someone on social media, mm -hmm. regardless of what they think of the person, yeah. <laughs> they are human. Yeah, they're, they're human. Are and um, some of the things that are thrown at you, it's, it's really, really shocking that people can say things like that. Yeah. But what can you do? All right. So can you also share like an inspirational quote you live by? 
Well, my favorite quote is Proverbs 4.23, mm -hmm. which says, Above all else, guard your heart, because within that lies the wellspring of life. And um, I just believe that, um, especially as a woman. I think um, not just about relationships and the romantic side of your heart, but anything that you let into your life, ultimately you let into your heart. And it's about guarding that space and making sure that nothing permeates or infiltrates who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we oftentimes, especially as women, like I said, get very caught up in whether it's a friendship, a relationship, you know, whether it's work even, yeah. we take everything from an emotional base. Yeah. And uh, when you guard your heart, you're basically saying, you know, God, you've made me uh, an emotional being, mm -hmm. but I need your protection from things that could potentially hurt me. Yeah. But I still want to be able to do what I do with as much passion yeah. and fire and drive and love that you've made me to be able to do so. Um, that would be my favorite and probably most um, applicable quote of, of all time. All right. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us on the first half of the segment. Great. We're going to take a commercial break, everyone. And my co-host, Honest, will take over. Welcome back to the second segment of the Zim Social Chat. My name is Honest, and we're still with Ruvenego Parenyatwa. Good to have you, Ruvi. It's good to be here. So just when I see you on social media, I've always wanted to ask you this question. How can you describe yourself in three words? Three words? Um, honest, no pun intended. Um, fun. And... Um, maybe very fussy. How do you strike a balance between your personal life and, and your and work, work life? Um, very difficult to separate because I don't know how this will sound and I know very few people can identify and understand it. But I think you will as well because you are in the same industry yes. and you work late hours. Yes. There really is no balance. What happens is everything becomes an amalgamation of everything. Mm -hmm. Where um, when I'm at home, my work doesn't leave me. Um, when I'm out wherever I am, my work doesn't leave me. I have become who I am. So whether I'm with family and friends or at work, I'm still Ruveniko. Wow. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, you, you, can't, sense. you can't say, but I'm off is there for, it's almost like social media, it's Zimike, you get it. People will comment and talk to you throughout the day, 24 seven, and you just have to become the personality that you are. There's no off switch. So um, it might maybe, where I think it might be a problem is, where people around me that are close to me, like you're saying, my family, Zimungua, they don't want to necessarily hear about the media industry and the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. They want to just chill out, you know, and talk about other things. Um, but as I said, you know, even with, with my line of work, you always have to be up to speed with everything. There's no time to rest. There's no break. You have to be abreast with current affairs. You're always reading, always watching, always, you know, up to speed. So there's no real break between everything. It's so talking just, about your family, yeah. how do you... How do they feel when they see the media reports about you, mm. the negative comments? Oh, well, thankfully, um, from a family that um, has been in the public eye for a long time, um, my father in particular, so if anything, he has coached me on how to handle that kind of negative press or negative comments. Because, um, like I was saying earlier to Tafadzo, that I would be on antidepressants, you know, if I cared about every last little comment. Um, but like I said, what's important is to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. People say things, some people just have a bad tone. Social media is faceless and voiceless. So sometimes people just use a, 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 a sort of a tone or language that might sound combative. But meanwhile, they're, they're a supporter of you and they're just giving you a heads up. So you just have to filter what people say. And, you know, so my family, um, my mum before used to, you know, but I think, um, you know, again, like I'm saying with my dad and that discussion, and we all now know that you, you can't take everything to heart. So you don't panic when you see a headline on H Metro, for example? Uh, metro no <laughs> Okay, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be very honest. Um, but, um, you know, I panic when I... Do, I do panic when I'm told I'm in the paper without me knowing about it because... Mm -hmm especially if it's an article. If it's photos, I can't control that. They do that all the time, that's okay. But when it's an article, 
that's worrying because there's no ethical journalist who would write about someone else, yeah. let alone a fellow journalist, without calling them for a comment. So yes, I do panic. I had that happen just this weekend on Sunday in one of the publications. They put this whole article and put me on the headline, wow. you know, and it was negative. And I was very frustrated because it was inaccurate, yeah. it was unfair, and it was wrong. And you, you didn't know, get a chance and I didn't to get a chance to come. No one yora nyaya musi na kunzwa kuti so yeah, I do panic because there is a level of that in Zimbabwe where there are some journalists that are very unethical and um, need a lot more, just to be whipped into line, really. You know, if it was a first world and I had a lot more energy, I would have gone to, I would have gone with my lawyer to that publication and said, and no, 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 them. this is out of order and sued them. But now I actually see, and also system you day for me, you get it, it's a yeah. process. So in the end, I did, however, contact the publication and spoke with the editor and expressed my absolute disgruntlement at how they handled it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only instance I would panic when I'm in an article and I don't know about it. If I'm in the paper and it's an article and there was an interview, I should know, I should know because I should have been given the opportunity to give a comment. That's such an interesting yeah. life you have because <laughs> every time you get your comments on social media, yeah. it's in press. But anyway, yeah. I think you, you, like what you said earlier on, you're very uh, particular mm. about what's said about you. Mm. So I'm sure you can handle it in the best way. I read somewhere online where it was saying you were once the deputy chairperson of the Zimbabwe Youth Council. Right. How was that experience for you? <laughs> I was, yeah, deputy chairperson of Harare Youth Council. Mm -hmm. When I moved back to Zimbabwe after living in Cape Town, I joined the Harare Youth Council because, as I said earlier to Tafadza, that I've always felt like I have a lot more to serve my country for without getting into hardline politics. Um, for me, the Youth Council on paper is an apolitical youth body that is supposed to cater to the needs of the Zimbabwean youth, right, on paper. Yes. Of course, now people look at it and always affiliate it with one party. Mm -hmm. Can't take that away, you know, um, but while I was part of it, the Harare Youth Council was, um, it was actually, it, it was an inaugural, inaugural uh, you know, committee. And uh, so we were under the Zimbabwe Youth Council. And uh, my chairperson was AC Lumumba. And uh, we worked well together. AC, contrary to what he does now, I mean, he's still a good friend of mine. You know, I don't uh, agree or approve of half the things he does, uh, but he's still my friend. And um, he was my chairperson. And we, you know, struggled a lot with, um, I guess the political side of things, where yes. you want to achieve certain things, but the public, especially the youth, the way that they receive you, they think Kuti Matumwa mm -hmm. ne ruling party, you know? So it was always difficult to connect with youth across the board because they thought that you had an agenda. Um, but that was definitely an experience I got to interact with, um, speak to young people that I wouldn't bump into ordinarily. You know, to my mission, my mandate, they take you all over the country, oh, all over the city, and you know, you learn a lot. So it was definitely good for, for opening me up to, to other young people. Sometimes people think because I'm the daughter of somebody, I'm blind, deaf, and dumb to the challenges yeah, that young people face. But I have worked firsthand with them, and I can't take away that experience. It was, yeah, phenomenal. What are your plans for the next five years? Where do we see you as a media personality in five years? You will see me and you will hear me. Uh, for me to map out my five-year plan at this stage, it's one of those things that with media, you have to keep people guessing. You have to keep reinventing yourself. So I would say in five years' time, I'll still be doing my talk shows you know, to put it broadly, yeah. but specifically, it's one of those things that it's, it's something that you want it to unfold as it goes along. You know, you want people to be like, oh, okay, doja akwita, okay, okay. And even you will be learning different things from your travels, from your interactions, from your relationships. So your personality is supposed to develop. I don't believe in some, I mean, it's, I think it's an old school mentality. And they stay in the same field or say, doing the exact same, same thing same for thing. almost 20 years. And it's an old school mentality because in their minds it means no mm -hmm. But our age of thinking says you must evolve. I started with radio, now I'm in television, who knows where I'm going next. So I think um, five years from now you'll still be hearing and seeing me on different platforms. We can't wait to yeah. see more of you in yeah. different media channels, yeah. especially in TV. Yes. I think we'll be seeing you in Southern Africa. <laughs> 
I receive that. Yes, because <laughs> I've, I've always seen you as a personality who's driven by different uh, communities. So representing us as Zimbabwe mm. on an Africa level yeah. would really mean a lot to us. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that support. I, uh, that's the plan. You know, with this world today, you can't just be working with Chiti Ruita Jim Zimbabwe Chete. Mm. You have to be regional and international. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. spending time with us. No, you're welcome. What are your plans for the festive season? Rest. Okay. No travel. Rest. If I travel, it must be restful. Okay. Yeah. But um I think it's been it's been a busy, busy year. And it's been um, a busy rest year. above everything. You want to start the year on a high. Often we all make such hectic plans for the festive season. Mm -hmm. Come uh, 10 January, you want another holiday. <laughs> you know, so this year I've committed to say I will absolutely rest, we regardless wish, of where I am. We wish you all the best yeah. in all your future endeavors. Thank uh, you. And you, what are your plans? I am working. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think I'm always working. Yeah. So my plans are always based on what I do on social media. Okay. So if it means me traveling, yeah. I'll still be on my uh, iPad on internet yeah. just to monitor the brands that I manage. Good. So I don't actually have a break. Rest, a break. That's it's true. actually I'm always have to be alert in everything that yes. I do. So you, you, you understand when you ask me that question, how do you separate? I totally you understand. can never separate. You can never separate. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ruveneko, for your Thank time. Thank you. Guys, if you've got any questions for Ruveneko, you can use the hashtag ZimSocialChat on any platform and we're able to refer the questions to her. Thank you, Ruvi. Thank you for having me and uh, shutting down the year with me. Definitely an honor and I appreciate it a awesome. lot. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>